Hey guys, Richard here with CRG Games, and um, I've got a couple of these Midnight Hunt set boosters to open, so we're going to crack these. I'm keeping the draft boosters for later on when I do drafts, and uh, I wanted to show you guys a neat little um, Harley Davidson branded uh, utility knife that I got uh, back in the day. I used to work at a Harley dealership, and when people would come in and trade in bikes, a lot of times they never clean out their saddlebags, so you'd get all kinds of random little things and um, I forgot that I had this I just pulled it out of a uh, a box of old stuff I had from that job that I never threw away and I was like huh I could probably get some use out of that because I don't know if everybody has this problem but I lose every pocket knife I get and uh, it's a real problem I really want to get a nice Leatherman. Uh, I got my dad one for Father's Day last year. And I got him one of the uh, uh, the titanium ones. It is super nice. I had to open it up and play around with it uh, before I gave it to him. But one of these days I'll get one. Uh, I just, I always lose them. So I haven't done it yet. Um, <clears throat> also, something uh, I was just looking at. There's nothing too crazy in the in this set, right? So you've got um, a decent amount of rares actually in this set, but as far as the value goes, the value is in the mythics and rares, but mostly in the mythics. And I was just playing around with the the numbers um, earlier, and there's actually um, no mythics that are under 25 cents and i know it doesn't seem very um uh you know spectacular but i guess it's kind of a big deal um the total value of all of the cards in this set combined uh extended arts foils everything is like 1140 dollars um it's funny because what's it called uh, Meat Hook Massacre, the extended art foil version, is like 7% of the entire value. Like, just that one card is 7% the entire value of the combined value of every card in the set. It's pretty interesting. Um, so it's like heavily, heavily weighted towards the top, which is okay. I mean, you get that sometimes. I could have swore that was a list card. Um... <laughs> It would have been pretty funny if that was the list card. <clears throat> so this is probably the only box I'm going to open the uh, packs on camera. I just really don't prefer doing that anymore. By the way, the lands, uh, I think the total value of all the lands was like $9. Uh, the basic lands, that is. Which is interesting. Huh, no list cards yet. Um, tokens was like close to 10 bucks, I think. It was only like 1% of the value. These lands didn't actually really get a whole lot of, um, like, not a whole lot of people really liked them a whole lot, I guess. We got Kyler, Shipwreck Marsh. These are actually doing pretty decent, though. Uh, I did not know that was in the list lot. Hard evidence from Modern Horizons 2. That's kind of dumb, to be honest, but hey, it is what it is. I actually like that card, though. And if you have Academy Manufacturer out, you make three tokens in Investigate for one mana at sorcery speed. It's pretty neat. And you guys will already know I was not able to get um, those uh, bolt cards that I wanted to. Uh, the guy, you know, reneged on the deal and sold them to someone else. And, but I've been looking uh, pretty much all night last night. I was up till, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that, looking on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and I found a listing for 2.2 million cards um, here in Ohio. Uh, bulk, the listing says that it was like overflow cards from Star City Games when they were renovating their place. I guess they sold off maybe a bunch of, um, uh, they say randomized commons on commons. You know, I'm not exactly sure what that means. They said it was good for a, uh, 
you know, if you wanted to resell the bulk in like bulk lots. If it come from Star City Games, you know, I'm sure that's picked over, but I don't know. They're asking $13,000 for it, which comes out to like regular bulk rate. Which, I mean, isn't necessarily insane. Hey, that's pretty cool. Got a Grand Arbiter. Uh, my buddy used to play, a, he still has it, a Grand Arbiter deck, and it is so oppressive not being able to play like any of your stuff. Like, it's it's definitely a kill on sight card. And being only four mana, you can get them out pretty damn early. I hate playing. Well, I mean, we all kind of hate, hated playing against that card, but still kind of neat. Oop, pithing needle there. Uh, and Bramble Armor. So a lot of cards from this set do still sell pretty well. It looks like uh, this this pack is effed up a little bit there. Like this, it's like melted. So I'm assuming they use some kind of, uh, you know, heat roller in this one. Um, yeah, this one was on that roller for too long. I hope this has crimped cards in it. Or messed up cards. And it does not. I can never get that lucky. All I want are some cards that are effed up from the factory. <laughs> is that too much to ask? Uh, Grafted Identity, I mean, this is a good hit. Uh, and an M20 Twin Blame Paladin, Lisa Forgotten Archangel. Uh, that is the Showcase Foil. Hmm. Maybe the effed up packs uh, all have good stuff in them. All right. So, also, while I'm thinking about it, um, Double Masters 2020, 2022, um, I'm hoping to get, I, I told my LGS, I, I said, uh, however many you, you can get, I'll buy them all. In my area, there's not like a ton of people that are going to be buying, you know, several hundred dollar collector boxes. There's a couple people that do. Uh, but most of us uh, regular players... Um, not including myself, don't buy like this big expensive boxes. I do. And I, I, I told him, I said, hey, you know, I'll, I'll buy as many of the collector boosters as you can get. Um, which, at the last time we talked, it wasn't a whole lot. I think it was like seven. But um, I told him I'd take them all. And I am torn over whether or not to crack them. Because from a business standpoint... Hey, nut collector. Neat. From a business standpoint, cracking them is a bad idea. I should keep them sealed. But I'm also a player, and I'm also a collector. I also know that there's a lot of cards in there that are worth a lot. And the foil etched cards, I don't know if you guys have been keeping track of those, but they're, you know, $500 plus. Or not foil etched. Um, the, uh, what do you call them? The new, the new etching, uh, the new foiling, the textured foils are like $500 plus. Foil Consider, that is a good hit. That is a very good hit. Consider is two bucks. I think Foil Consider might be three. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but three dollars um, on one card when the box itself cost, I don't know, what did I pay for these? About 80 bucks, maybe a little bit less with Amazon Cashback. Like, they're... Amazon had pretty good deals on these not that long ago. And um, you guys need to keep an eye out during um, Prime Day. Last year, someone posted on uh, you know, on the subreddit, um, MTG Finance subreddit, hey, what kind of deals did they have last year? You know, you know, what are you thinking they're going to have this year? And they uh, posted like the Ikoria Commander decks. Um... They had like all five of them for like 80 bucks or something like that. Some dirt cheap number. And uh, yeah, you know, anybody who bought the whole set at 80 bucks, just raking it in. Because I think the full set right now sells for like $250, $260. Like if you got it at 80 bucks, that's that's a killer, killer deal. Um, I didn't. At the time I was, you know, I, I wasn't doing any of this stuff that last Prime Day. Um, <clears throat> but it's always, I usually see, and how I usually feel, as another consider, is 
I don't get buyer's remorse from buying a product, even if it goes down, I guess, because I know in the end they're probably going to go up. Hot missile, three, four bucks. Um, I get buyer's or non buyer's remorse, right? You either didn't buy at all or you didn't buy enough. I didn't buy at all, so I didn't get to make a couple hundred dollars on an $80 investment. Is what it is. You could have cracked those for just the, uh, you know, just those commander instants. And just made out that way. Um, but, you know, I didn't do it. It is what it is. But this year, I'm not going to make the same mistake. The only problem is, Double Masters 2022 and Amazon's Prime Day are coinciding within just a few days. And I think that's going to cause a big crunch for a lot of people. Hey, Felwar Stone, nice. Because... <clears throat> People, at least for Magic the Gathering product, if everybody's already spent their money on Double Masters 2022, and I'm wondering if that isn't why WotC uh, kind of seems like they rushed it out after um, uh, Battle for Baldur's Gate. <clears throat> I'm wondering if they weren't rushing it out so they could get all their sales in at higher margins before they you know, put it on Amazon or before Amazon has their prime day. I, I have no clue. I'm just speculating, but I would assume that, um, th they might get a bigger return, uh, from, you know, their normal, uh, supply chain, um, the way they do it. But I, I don't know. <clears throat> the supply chain for, uh, Magic the Gathering shouldn't be that long. Actually, I've been thinking about it the past couple of days. I wanted to do a video. Um, so I've got some supply chain uh, experience <clears throat> at uh, a, um, my last job. Um, I did, you know, quoting, and I was in the manufacturing industry, um, quoting for machine work, uh, material, shipping. I did the whole thing, uh, and it was in the hydraulics industry. So basically a customer would come in and they would say, hey, I've got um, this, you know, this particular product. Here's the prints. You know, can you make it? How much is it going to cost? And when can I get it? Those were basically the questions, um, which aren't usually too hard. It just takes, a, you know, you just follow the process in quoting and you can get it done. I'm assuming Magic the Gathering is very similar in the respect that they send a um, quote out to their printers and they ask the printers, uh, how much is it going to cost? And when can we get the cards? You know, that's pretty much how the process goes. And then I, I would assume that the printer does the rest, right? Watsi will commission the artwork. Um, they will get all those assets together, send them to the printer, say, hey, I need you to put these on paper, cards, that is. Um, what can you do? And how fast can you do it? And how much is it going to cost? And they'll do some other things as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure they work with the uh, printers to get different ideas, you know, feedback and all that good stuff. R&D as well. Um, so I've been thinking about doing a video on that. I want to do some more research ahead of time first, uh, just to make sure I can give accurate information. But generally, that's kind of how that stuff works. Uh, I've got a Sunrise Cavalier and a Clue Stone. I'm working out, running out of room here. All right, last pack. Hey, is that the first? That's the first uh, gold stamp one. Nice. I like that. All right. Hopefully get something good. I mean, really, all we need is a meat hook massacre. I haven't pulled one in quite a while, it feels like. Uh, we got a Gisa. Yeah, that's not the worst thing. So, I believe I saw, like, what, three considers in here. Um, nothing crazy in the list slot, I don't think. You know, some decent rares. Overgrown farmland. Um, I think... Lisa might be a couple bucks. Uh, the I mean, the lands are... They're around like 5 to $10, so they're actually not that bad. Vanquish the Horde. I think for a while, this was like one of the most expensive cards in the set. Or not the most expensive, but it was up there in the top 10. Um, just because of its uti uh, utility. Uh, Augur of Autumn, I'm pretty sure is worth a couple bucks. It's been a long time since I've had any Slogurk, so... This will be good stuff to add to the uh, inventory. That's all. That's the only reason I'm cracking these. I got them cheap. Um, so I'm cracking the, uh, 
um, you know, the set boosters and keeping the draft for down the road. So I got some more coming until next time. I'll catch you later.